Hey, this is Trish with Peregrine Designs, and I thought I'd do a really good and comprehensive video on how to make a really nice handbag. And I know this is going to be a multiple course process because this is a long process, but I think at the end you'll get a really great idea on how to make a pretty handbag. This one I made for me because I love pink and I think that's very pretty. This is another one that I made. This is a little bit wider and this is a little bit narrower, but this actual design is designed to hold a laptop and it's a great bag for travel. You're going to, in this course, you're going to learn how to do a beautiful welt to pocket right here. Got a little bit of party action going on at the top. We're going to go ahead and use very interesting zippers and I'll tell you where to get all that. And the inside of the bag is very capacious. I've got stuff in here, but I've got a big, um, I've got big pockets here. I've got multiple pockets on the inside and I, you can adjust the side of the bag so that it's not so big. This finishes at four inches. This one, I think I did this one. This is a much larger bag and this one is finishing at about five inches here. So a little bit larger, um, but equally uh, competent in terms of what you want it to do. In the course, I will go ahead and talk about all of the supplies that you're going to need. And we'll also go through just a lot of detail. I do apologize because I have a tendency to really go into a lot of detail. Some of you will really appreciate that. No, new sewers are going to appreciate that. More experienced sewers, you know, thank goodness that we have uh, fast forward. So I think that you'll get a really good idea on how to make it. This is a combination, sorry, this is a combination of a lot of different bag techniques. And so I think you'll enjoy this and I'll talk to you how to cut it down if it's just a bit too big. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to get started on the supplies that you need. And Kitty is going to tell you everything that he wants in a bag. I'll be right back. This is a, a listing of the, some of the stuff that you're going to need. You're going to need fabric, obviously. My high recommendation is that you use only quilting cotton. I just want you to use quilting cotton for main body and your contrast. Uh, I'm going to make this bag for my niece who's getting married, so I'm going to make it out of this gorgeous fabric. I think this is K-Facet, K-A-F-F-E-E, Facet is I think F-A-S-S-E-T. T could have another T, but this is K facet fabric. It, really beautiful jewel tones, very saturated, really bold and gorgeous. And um, she likes blues and greens, so this kind of works. If she doesn't like the bag, she'll like the money that I put inside. And then I'm going to use some contrast fabric here. I haven't decided which ones, but I'll use contrast fabric for strapping and for binding and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to do. How much fabric? I always err on the side of more versus less. It's really tough to work with less. I would recommend at least a uh, yard and a half for the outside and a yard and a half for the inside. So at least a yard and a half just to be on the safe side. Foam. You have multiple ways that you can do foam. You can use, Joann's has a quarter inch foam. This is kind of similar to a Joann's foam. This is quarter inch. Uh, it has a, they call it scrim or a t-shirt back. Nice foam, really good foam, but it is a quarter inch. And so sometimes my experience has been with a home machine, a quarter inch may be just a bit too aggressive. It may be a bit too, um, too tough for a home machine to work with. It's not so bad until you start getting it. When you get to the corners of the bag, it starts getting dicey putting it on. So this, and it only comes in a 20 inch width. So this is not my first option. It works well, but it's not my first option. Your second option too is nice. This is called, let me lift my thing up and I apologize. This is called Soft and Stable and it's by Annie.com, but it's soft and stable. It comes in black and white, go white, um, but it also is, let me see if I can do this. It's very narrow. It's about an eighth of an inch and it has scrim. It has a, you know, finishing on both sides. So even though it's very thin, it has really good stand up. So a really nice foam, really good foam, um, by white, so because then it won't mess up with your colors. So I like this foam as well. This works really well. Your third option that I tend to like quite a bit, let me grab my thing here, is foam from MiamiCorp.com. They have, they specialize in like upholstery for marine vehicles, you know, boats, and also car upholstery and all kinds of stuff. But they have what's called a 316 
um, I call it a t-shirt back, but 3 16 is just obviously a sixteenth of an inch lighter, uh, narrower than a quarter inch. And if you want to get in touch with them, this is their number 1-800-543-0448. If you go on their website, head for foam and padding, then head for the block that says sew foam, and then head for the piece that the 3 16 scrap cloth backed. And this is that kind of foam right here. So you can kind of see the difference between a quarter inch and 3 16 Let me see if I can do that where you can kind of see the difference. See the difference in width? That makes a difference and it's a little bit easier for your home machine to play with this. Um, it's a little softer, but it still makes a very nice stand-up bag. It comes in, and I'll move you, I, I apologize, it comes in, see that right there? It comes in a 60 inch length. So you really get a bang for your buck and it's not terribly expensive. And I think it's a $15 drop ship. So that is my Miami Corp is my go-to foam. That is really nice. And it will generally be tolerated by most home machines. Pellon Shape Flex by White. Uh, white is always good. And it's called Pellon SF101 Shape Flex. This is a really nice product. This has a fabric on one side. Let me see if I can get you a piece here. It has kind of a fabric on one side and it has a very pebbly, sandy texture on the other. The sandy texture is your adhesive. If you happen to get stuff that has a clear texture on the back, you didn't get genuine shape flex and it doesn't have a great adherence. So my recommendation is go for straight shape flex. Where can you get it? You get it at uh, obviously Joann's, you can get it on Amazon. Just make sure that it's got the pebbly, you know, pebbly texture because then you're going to get good adherence. Stitch Witchery. I use a lot of Stitch Witchery. Stitch Witchery is a, and this is a half inch uh, size, which works really well. It's basically a glue that they've dried and put into strips. Half inch works well. Get the Ultra, so make sure Get the heavy duty strong version half inch wide stitch witchery and you'll need a roll of that because i do a lot of stitching and so i use a lot of stitch witchery true glide slides these are your slides and these put your straps on this is a true glide i got these on amazon you can get them at joann's you can get them probably a lot of places I got these at um, on Amazon, and a popular design here is Country Brook Design, and you get the hardware pieces. Get one and a half inches. Where am I? One and a half inches. Um, these work well. These are the fatter kind. They did have a thinner version that actually wasn't too bad. Let me show you the thinner version. Let me see if I put them in here. Yeah, here's the thinner version. You can kind of tell. Um, you can kind of tell the difference in size, obviously, and this one is flat and thin. This one is round. I mean, it both of them will hold the bag perfectly fine. These are a little less expensive right here, and I've used bags, and I've done bags with these, and I wasn't disappointed. These, these work fine, you know, but these are obviously very, very sturdy. So you're going to need these. You'll need four of these because you got to put your straps on. You will need polypropylene wedding, wedding webbing, one and a half inch polypropylene webbing. Um, you'll need that for your straps. I like one and a half because if you go with just one inch, it's too narrow on your shoulders and it's going to be uncomfortable. So you're going to need one and a half. I get mine on Amazon and this is an example of who I get mine from. This is polypropylene webbing. This is again a country brook. This happened to be one inch for other projects, but this is a good one. And then this one here was actually from Strap Works. Strap Works. And this is one and a half. And I got it from the heavy duty, uh, the heavy duty Strap Works. So I don't want the lightweight, I want the heavy duty uh, polypropylene webbing. Next page. Um, Pellon True Grid Interfacing. Pellon True Grid is an interfacing that you buy at 
Joanne's, uh, probably Hobby Lobby, all kinds of places. But this is what an example of what it looks like. It is an inch square. It's not a perfect inch. It's not, it is not absolutely completely accurate, but it's good enough. And I like it because it's very square. Um, it has no adhesion, so you can come at it with a hot iron, not a steamy iron, but you can come at it with a hot iron and it doesn't wrinkle all that well. And it opens up and it kind of holds onto the fabric. So I use this a lot when we're going to make some patterns and you don't need much but you need you know you need some I think it comes in a 60 inch width so you've got plenty but I use a lot of this because I can write all over it zippers zippers are really interesting the zippers if you go and use ready-made zippers you're going to need three zippers you'll need two zippers let me grab my bag hold on just for a sec like I said, you can use ready-made zippers. You're gonna need three zippers, and I've shown you here. You will need two zippers for the front, for this welt pocket right here, and you'll need a zipper for the top. And you can see that I have a blue zipper and a pink pull, which I like quite a bit. So I really enjoy that. How do you achieve that? Go to thezipperlady.com and this is a lot of her contact information. She just has just a, just a rainbow of colors, everything from neutrals to non-neutrals. And you can also buy what's, uh, she's got the colorways where you have all the varietal zippers that colors that she offers so that you can, and you also have as a result too, you have what each one of those colors are. So you, you know, if you need blues, you've got 15, 10, 15 blues. So do you need blue, green, blue, or you need navy? So just a host of different colors. And so this is handy. You can buy a, a demo pack here to get, get you an idea of the colors. Generally, you can kind of figure it out. But what I end up doing is you buy these by the yard. So what I end up uh, buying is if I like the color, I'll go ahead and buy two, three yards of zipper and I will buy 20 pulls. And you say, wow, 20 pulls, how come? Because even though you may not need a long zipper, you will always need a pull. So you need more pulls than you think. So I'm looking for a zipper that's called a five millimeter zipper, a wider zipper for dress, or not for dressmaking, but for purses. On her website, I even think she has a, has a link that said, hey, these are a purse zippers. This is a five millimeter. This is a wider, this is a nylon coil zipper. Um, and this one is an example of a dress, make, dress zipper. And you can tell that there's a difference in the size of these because these are thinner and they're more designed for dresses. This is much more designed for purses and for pillows and stuff like that. Every because she sells these by the yard, she also sells the pulls separately and not challenging to do, and I'll teach you how to put this on, but every zipper will come with what's called, you can get a, this is a locking pull. This is what we call a short pull. This kind of locks down. And so this is your standard pull that comes. But I particularly like pulls and you don't get them with all your zippers, but if there's a lot of colors and she has them, you can get what's called a long pull like this. It is not a locking pull, but what I find is, is that when I'm making a purse, I don't care because the zipper is on the horizontal here. I don't care that it's not locking, meaning that I could go ahead and do this and I could get it open. So it doesn't necessarily lock. You don't want to use one of these things when you're making a pair of pants because then you'd have a very serious wardrobe malfunction, but it works great in a purse. And so I particularly like that. So what I will do is I'll frequently buy, if I like the color, I'll buy two, three yards of zipper and 20 pulls. I might buy 10 of these colors and I might buy another 10 of these colors. So I've got, I like zippers. I like zippers a lot. And I just, and I use them all. It's amazing how much I use. So this is what I enjoy. And I would really recommend that you go on her website. You're gonna need two rings. This is debatable. These are one inch D rings right here. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because in my bag, let me rip my bag open again. <laughs> In my inside pocket here, I will put, I will take out my reading glasses, but in my inside pocket, dang, I'm sorry, everybody. I will put a lanyard with a D-ring 
on the inside of that pocket so that I can hook my keys to it and I can put my reading glasses on it. So that is very helpful. Completely optional, but I like it and it's a nice touch. So we'll do that when we make the bag. You'll need some temporary adhesive. I want to go ahead and get this fabric to hold to that foam. So this, is a f this is the adhesive that I really like. This is Odif 505 Temporary Adhesive for fabric. And it's really nice. It does a nice job of uh, really sticking well. And it, uh, it, it, it is a bit repositionable, but it really does a nice job. Don't send your husband to Lowe's to get you, you know, spray adhesive because he's going to come back with something industrial and it's going to blow your mind. So this works really well. Um, this, you know, go ahead and go for a few of them, but that's what the one I like. Obviously, other things that are just normal, you're going to need thread to match your fabric. I would recommend that you use an all-purpose thread. You can quilt it with embroidery thread if you like, but when you start putting it together, use an all-purpose really much, you know, a better, like a 50-weight thread. Um, I think that's the weight that you were looking for because it'll hold together well. I need this bag to be structurally strong. Bobbin thread, you'll use bobbin threads, but obviously in one case, I want my bobbin thread in the perfect world. I want at least one bobbin to match my zipper because I want that bobbin to be that, you know, so I don't see that uh, bobbin thread on my zipper. So one thread is going to at least match my zipper. Larger needle, I would recommend, 9014 is about right. And a chalk liner, you can use, you're gonna need to do some marking but I find a chalk liner re really works well. This is white, this is yellow. These work real well. Friction works well as, uh, as well. This was from Amazon, but if you come at this with a hot iron, the marks will generally, most of the time, they will lift off and they will uh, disappear. Not always, depending on what fabric you're using. If you use, you're not gonna be using a satin back crepe, but sometimes on some fabrics I have had, I've used the dark, I've used the dark friction and it didn't come off as well as I would have liked. So there you have it. I think I've covered everything that you want. And the next, what we'll go ahead and start doing is we're gonna make our pattern. I'll be right back. I forgot one thing. You're going to need something to turn tubes in order for you to make the tube that your webbing goes inside. I use a product called the Fast Turn Tube Turner. I think you can get it on Etsy, Amazon. Not cheap, but you're going to need something to turn those tubes. There may be another option where we'll just do it by hand. Uh, where we'll lap the fabric over, but this makes short work of it. And I hate to make you go buy this, but you can watch me do it and see if it's worth the investment. I do a lot of, I do a lot of, you know, um, purses. So I use this thing all the time, but what this is, is it's this. So what ends up happening is you make a channel, you make a tube of fabric, okay? And then you shove this in, <clears throat> And then you have these little um, things with a little pigtail at the very bottom. You put that in, and you're going to watch me do this if I can get this in. You put that in, you squirrel it around the fabric, and then you pull the fabric through. So that was a really big help. You're going to need something if you want to turn them like I'm turning them. If you want to do it old school, we'll try to, I'll try to figure out how to teach you how to do it old school. But this comes in awfully handy, optional, but really handy. Let's go ahead and start making your patterns. That's the first thing that you want to do. You're using your true grid here, and I want you to cut three pieces of true grid. Your first piece we're going to cut that welt pocket bag. That is, I'll lift you up here so you can see, that's the pocket. That's this piece right in here. Your first pattern piece, I want you to cut 11 inches wide by 17 inches tall. What's going to happen is that's going to be put in half like this, and that's what's going to be the bag that your welt pocket is in. You're going to cut two of those and you're going to SF them, shape flex them. That's your, that's your inside of that welt pocket. You're going to shape flex it and you can put this aside. If you have directional fabric, uh, you'd obviously want your directional fabric to be going north-south. Okay. If you use directional fabric, when you open up the bag, just tidbits here, when you open up the bag, you'll see the directional fabric here, so you, but it'll be upside down on here, but you don't really see that. You just want to see it right here. 
Okay, so put that aside. Your second one that you're going to cut is you are going to cut your inside pocket. I'll go ahead and open that up. This is your inside pocket. I'm sorry, I wrote it weirdly. I want you to cut it 17 inches this way, and I want you to cut it 18 inches this way, because again, this will fold at a height of nine inches. You're going to cut two and you're going to shape flex. That's your inside pocket. That is this pocket right here. You're going to shape flex both of those. So those are your inside pockets. If you have directional fabric, make sure that your directional fabric is going up on the 18 inch piece. Okay, it's almost a square. And again, some of this is negotiable, but this tends to work well. It gives you a tall enough pocket. Your last piece is the interesting piece. This is the moneymaker piece. And let me put my things right here. This is your outside of the bag. This is your laptop bag. And I've written all over this, and I'll explain what I do. First, I want you to go ahead and cut a piece of true grid. I want you to cut it 17 inches this way by 13 inches this way. Okay, make sure that your directional fabric is going in the up direction because your welt pocket is going to be right here. So 17 by 13. I want to round these corners, all right, because my bag has got rounded corners. So I'm going to round these corners, but I'm not going to do individual rounding. I want to do one time all four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it like this, put it together, okay. Then I'm going to turn it again like this so that what I have is I have a fold here and I have four pieces right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something round and I'm going to trim those corners, but I'm going to trim them all at the same angle and the same size. That way I know that I've got really nice corners. So you take something round. Let's see if I can do this so you can see what I'm doing. Let me move this down slightly and see if you can. There we go. Put my corner here. Make sure this is all pretty. Okay. And I'll go ahead. And I'll make a round. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. <laughs> Wasn't exactly precise on my 17, but close. Okay, that way I know that I have rounded corners. So I'm real happy about that. Now what we'll do is let's open this back up. Here we are here. And let me go through some of the things that I wanted to uh, show you and, and some little pointers. My welt pocket placement is here, and I want my welt pocket, which is that right there, I want that to sit three and a half inches below the top. So I'm going to draw a line, three and a half, and you use what I did was I used a big ruler like this, put it on three and a half, and went ahead and drew, drew my line. My, my tri glide, right, this I want to sit two inches from the top right here. So I'm going to make a note to myself, hey, my tri-glide sits two inches from the top. That's just a general note to me. My strap, my strap is negotiable, how you want your strap. I had this one come in um, pretty tight. I think this one probably came in at around, let's see what this one came in at. Hold on just for a second. This one came in about two inches from the edge. This one I had three and a quarter inches from the side seam right here. You can go somewhere. I didn't mind. I didn't mind that look. That gave me an opening at about seven and a quarter inches. That was big enough for. Uh, uh, an iPad or a tablet, and I thought that that was about right. I didn't think that that was too bad. This one, I gave it a little bit more opening. I gave it quite a bit more opening. I think this is running at about nine inches opening. So this is negotiable by you, how close your straps come into the sides. And so we're going to play 
We'll play this one. This is coming in at three and a quarter inches right here. So somewhere you've got to find the Goldilocks zone. So the strap comes in roughly three and a quarter upwards of four inches. Um, but I want it, you know, it's all aesthetics. This is three and a quarter. This one is about two. So somewhere two to four inches is where you're looking for love here, where your straps come in, because it makes a difference how big that welt pocket is going to be. And I wrote some other notes that I thought were helpful. Your small side pockets, which are, which is this one right here. I cut my fashion fabric, it finishes at seven inches tall. I cut my fashion fabric, this piece right here, the outside piece, this piece right here, I cut this at seven inches. I cut the lining because I want a three quarter inch binding because I'm going to self bind with that lining fabric. I cut the lining, the pink fabric, I cut that at eight and three quarters. The multicolored seven, the lining eight and three quarters. I also want that pocket to sit right almost at the base of the fabric, uh, at the bag. So I wanted this to sit. So I, what I did was I came down here, make a mark where the center of your, you know, make a mark where the center of your bag is right here. And I measured out with a tape measure, you know, I, I've got this one here, but I measured out where I roughly want that to come. And so, it's the final, it goes all the way around here to about 17 and a half. This again is negotiable as well. I didn't want the zipper, if you take a look at the bag, I didn't want the zipper to be too high because then it doesn't open too much. I didn't want it to be too low because then it opens too, too. It, this doesn't open enough, this opens too much. So I found that on this bag and on this design, about 17 and a half from the center all the way around up to the top, this uh, to the top where the zipper will join is about 17 and a half inches. That tended to be about the sweet spot in terms of how large I wanted my zipper to open. So what I did on here is I'll make a note to myself, 17 and a half to the zipper join, where it joins up the zipper, and that means 35 all the way around. But I also made some notes here where I want the bottom of my bag, bottom of my pocket to be on my bag. So I wanted my pocket to be roughly eight and a half inches from the center mark here to where I wanted the bottom of my pocket is about eight and a half inches. So I just made marks here. That gives me an idea of when I lay this thing out, where I'm going to put that um, middle panel, when I'm going to put this channel on and where I'm going to place stuff. A couple things. Um, this is just helpful for me. The, the circumference of the bag in the flat right here is around 58 inches. Um, the laptop will finish, the bag for the laptop will finish at 16 inches wide by 12 inches tall because I'm going to have a half inch seam allowance. And so that is a help that's going to tell me. That's why you can adjust this bag really hard. You can make this bag as wide or as narrow, as tall, as short as you like. But roughly, if I wanted to fit a laptop, I'm looking at it to finish at about 16 by 12. Now, how wide is this panel right here? And you notice I don't give you, you only have three um, patterns. How wide is this panel right here? It, deba it debates, you know, I cut, I cut the, the cut, the rough cut, was five inches and then with seam allowance it turns into a four inch wide um, width here. This one I cut at um, six inches rough cut and it finishes at five inches. It's just a personal debate about what you want it to look like. This actually holds just as much as this one. This is just a bit more capacious, a little wider, but this actually works out well because I was curious how I wanted to do that. The zipper I will cut at roughly 24 inches, but don't cut your zipper yet because we're going to play with your zipper, so don't cut that zipper yet. So I think I've got everything that I wanted to show you. Oh, your fashion fabric for your strapping, because you've got two pieces of strapping. 
you've got this piece right here. Let me see if I can get this out of my way here. Where am I? Yeah. Okay, this piece right here is attached to this piece right here. So two different pieces of fabric. This piece right here, I cut at 13 inches tall. This one right here is at 13. This piece here, I'll start at 66 inches and I'll cut it down so that we have about 33 on each side and it finishes at about 31. This one here is 13 inches tall and I'll fold it and finish it. My strapping, I don't cut my strapping 13 inches tall because it, it gets very difficult for your home machine to push through this. So I will cut my strapping at 11 inches, give or take, and my fashion fabric at 13 for the strapping alone, okay? So now that you have this, one other factoid that I use a lot, if you wanted, okay, what you could do is let's say you were working with fabric, let's say on this one here. See how, let me show you this one. See how I have that big chrysanthemum or big flower right here? Let's say I really wanted to fussy that in and I wanted to bring that front and center so that I really wanted to see that, you know, that piece right in there because of the way that the fabric, I can fussy that in. How do I do that? Well, one way that I do it to help fussy it, to make me able to see it, refold this fabric. Refold this piece right here, okay? And let's go ahead and fold it again. Well, let's do it this way because I made my little marks. So now we have it we have it folded like it was before. And you can see where I did little tick marks here. What you can do is you can cut that. This is tick mark. See, this was where the fold was. This piece right here, your extra is right here, but this is the center of this design. So that when I open it up, I have a peekaboo window. So if I'm using fussy fabric, let me see if I can show you this. If I'm using fussy fabric, I can go ahead and move that chrysanthemum so that it is right underneath this and I can fussy that in and I can get that to look exactly like I want it to look. That just gives me a window in which to look at it. You know, most of the time I'm, I'm not concerned about that. If you decide to fussy your fabric in like that, you're gonna need to buy a little bit more fabric because you're gonna have to strategically place this to get the look you want. So you might wanna buy about a half yard more than what you think you need. Okay, I think I've beat this to death. This is a really important piece. This, this, this will tell you exactly, this will tell you a lot about how to do it. Um, you're gonna foam and quilt the two outsides, this piece right here. You're gonna foam and quilt both of these, but you will not quilt the lining. The lining hangs free on the inside. You're just gonna shape flex that lining, okay? Okay, now we're gonna get ready and we're gonna start to work with our foam. This is pretty important why we made this pattern. It's a lot easier for me to lay this pattern down on this foam than it is trying for me to strategically cut that foam. So that's why I like the pattern. When I lay it on the foam, I'm gonna give myself about an inch all the way around. You can see that I've given myself an inch. And then what I've done is I've used a marker of any description and I've used my ruler and I've gone ahead and put one down and then I'll make a line right here and I'll move my pattern kind of almost join those lines. Give yourself a little bit between those lines. Give yourself a quarter of an inch between this line and then go ahead and finish here. And then I'll go ahead and give myself a little bit extra room. Why? Because when you start to quilt this, you will notice that your quilting will seize up depending on how tight you do your quilting. I do my quilting on a crosshatch kind of diamonds and I'll do it that way. But that's why you use your 505 temporary adhesive because it helps to hold your fabric down on that foam. So once I've gone ahead and done that, I'll go ahead and cut this out and I'll go ahead and mark on here that this is the outside bag so that I'll understand what I'm doing. One mark that may be helpful that we didn't do, it's not critical, but remember I said you wanted about a 17 and a half inch from the center of your bag to where I anticipate joining the zipper. So what I did was I took my 
uh, tape measure and I measured up 17 and a half and I came up about here. Actually, it's very close to where your welt pocket is. So there you have it. So that's roughly my zipper join. That's where I'm looking to have my zipper be happy and join up right there. That's a helpful mark. And I will make that same mark on the other side just so that I'm commensurate. So here's my initial mark here and I'll go ahead and that will be my second mark right there. That's helpful. That tells me where my zipper is going to join.